Today I will be showing you how I remove the logic board from inside the Apple Watch. This is the Series 1 42mm. Um, I've already removed the screen and the battery, um, which if you're wanting to take the, uh, the logic board out and you don't know how to do that, you should watch one of my other videos or another video on YouTube showing that. I'm going to first add a little bit of heat to the flex cable uh, to loosen the cold adhesive that is uh, holding it down to the Taptic engine. Um, I want to be very careful here not to tear this cable, um, although I can replace it, I prefer not to, um, so that we can maintain the display and the touch when we are done. Add, e add heat as you go so that you can do it with ease. Next I'm going to remove a sticker that will reveal uh, four solder joints uh, that hold uh, hold down this, this piece. I'll add a little bit of flux and a little bit of solder to make this a little easier. Using the solder iron and a little bit of pressure from the tweezers I'll lift. Um, and I'll liquefy the solder until this fully releases. The next step is going to be uh, removing the screws. First I'm going to uh, disconnect the connector for the force touch sensor that runs around the, uh, the frame. You can remove the force touch sensor if you'd like uh, to get it out of the way, but that just means you have to read hear it and um, it's, it's uh, something that I like to avoid doing. I'm going to go around removing each one of these screws. Now each one of these screws, uh, but the majority of them are different from each other. There are a few that are the same, but I would act as if they were all different because most of them are actually different um, from each other. Um, so keep them in order. Here on the side we're going to remove the um, this dial. I do that using a little uh, uh, kind of like a wrench that I manufactured. And I'll remove the inside part of that that controls the, uh, the movement there. Then I'll remove the three screws that are holding down the, uh, the main logic board to the, to the frame. Now we can remove the Taptic engine and we can disconnect the uh, Bluetooth antenna. There are two screws holding it down on the frame. So go ahead and remove those. And then there's a little bit of adhesive that holds it onto the back. You'll need to kind of separate that. Next we're going to take some needle nose pliers and we're going to loosen up um, the rest of this so that we can release um, the, uh, the flex cables on the inside there. Then we'll gently start to pry on the, the motherboard. Um, you can start in the corner just to give us a little starting point. Add heat uh, to loosen the adhesive. I did find during this one that this one's different than some of the others that I've done. Um, the adhesive that holds the uh, the external charging unit on the back was uh, ex excessive, and it, it actually held down the uh, um, LCD and digitizer uh, flex cable and tore it away from the logic board. Luckily, the solder joints on the uh, the Apple Watches are, are very weak. In fact, they, they broke clean off without tearing pads either um, on the logic board itself or on the flex cable, so I was actually able to reuse it instead of replace it. The uh, external um, uh, charging unit as well its flex cable was also adhered to the uh, basically the epoxy that's used to hold that charging unit back and uh, um, it, it was also hard for me to get up. 
This takes a little bit of patience because you have all these uh, extra um, uh, flex cables that run around that you have to be mindful of as you lift it out. But there is basically just adhesive holding it down at this point. You have to gently uh, pry up on it until it finally gives. Once you have it up far enough, you'll you'll be able to see the majority of the heat adhesive that's on the other side. So I'm going to heat up the back of that, and I'm going to carefully scrape at that adhesive until it releases uh, the logic board fully from the the inside of the frame. Now on the back here, the uh, the connector for the charger simply just came disconnected. I'll remove this sticker and I'll desolder these two little wires. Now the one with the white uh, piece that you can see there, that goes on the right and uh, that's just how I keep track of it, the white one goes on the right. Now you can see on the inside there the flex cable on it, I struggle to try to get it back out. It was so adhered, um, which they haven't been this way before so I was surprised to see this. I wonder if this was a... Um, like a re-refurbished re one at Apple or something because it had never been opened before so um, but it took quite a bit of effort to get under there and peel it off um, but I was able to do that successfully no no damage to it which is fine um, so I'm going to go ahead and solder this back on um, all the joints have looked great um, which wasn't actually that surprising due to the fact that the, uh, the amount of solder used is so minimal um, and the amount of flow through that the solder actually has on the, the joints is, is uh, sometimes I wonder how, it, how they even function. So I'll carefully remove the sticker that, that, uh, that's protecting those, those joints. I'll zoom in here a little bit so that we can see this better. I'll line up the, uh, the guides and place a couple tacks on each side so that uh, we can solder. Once I have it, I'm just gonna go across all of them and flow the solder through each one of those little holes. Now I noticed here on the other connector that the, uh, that the side closest to me looked a little bit like it started to separate as well from, uh, from the pulling. Um, I think the adhesive had done the same thing to that one. Um, one thing that I do like to do when I get in here is to simply apply more uh, solder to ensure a, a more solid connection anyway. So uh, we'll go ahead and, and do that. Push down with the tweezers to make sure I get a solid connection between the flex cable and the, and the logic board. Add a little bit of solder just to make sure that they're uh, fully, fully soldered through. We'll clean that up. We'll put the sticker back on, and then this one as well. I'm just gonna double check it because um, because the other one had received some damage. And although this one looks good, I am going to add some more solder just, just because. Clean that up as well, and then put the sticker back on. The sticker folded over on me. Let me undo that real quick. Now 
Next we'll go ahead and we'll uh, I'll show you how to reassemble it. Once you've done what you need to do to get in there, you'll grab the uh, the cable with the white uh, paint on it. You'll stick that on the right side, like I said earlier. Looks like I grabbed the other one first. There we go. And then you'll guide these under the sticker and around the that little metal uh, sheet here in the middle. And this is where I realized how stuck that other flex cable was. The epoxy that was simply just holding it down. And I carefully lift it up. Next, we'll uh, fold this flex cable as to be folded, kind of in an awkward way, so that when you flip the board over, it lies flush with the the, the base of the of the inside. Carefully work the connector back into its connector until it's straight. This will allow you to uh, make sure that it does charge once you turn it on. We'll move the uh, force touch sensor connector out of the way and we'll carefully uh, move the other connectors back into place as we slip the, uh, the logic board back inside. Carefully watching each joint making sure that they all go in. Next, we'll go ahead and uh, secure the um, uh, the logic board back down using those three screws that we removed. If you're confused which ones are which, the uh, the longest one goes up by the uh, um, in the top uh, right corner there. I'm going to secure this bracket to make the installment of the. Uh, of the little uh, dial out there easier be a little tricky to get back in carefully twisting we'll be able to secure that I'm going to take again needle nose pliers uh, to tighten it down as best I can till it, till it doesn't move anymore. Once I have that, then I'm going to loosen the bracket um, to allow me to uh, place the uh, um, the sensor back in between the bracket and the uh, and the dial. Sorry for my fingers in the way. A little hard. Just moving it into place now, and then tightening it back down, so that I can screw it in. And again, I'm going to use the little tool that I made uh, to uh, help me, because on the side there you can insert a small wrench. You'll have to make one that fits. I think this is the diagnostic port that Apple has there on the side. Put those screws back, put the power button back in, and screw in the screws. Up along there. Connect the force touch uh, sensor connector there and put in that screw. That's the battery connector right there. Make sure it's aligned up. Next, we're going to slide the, uh, uh, the Bluetooth antenna back in and we will connect it there on the board. Very tricky sometimes, got to line it up just right. Then we'll go ahead and insert those last two screws. To hold that, uh, that antenna down. Now we have to put the uh, taptic engine back in and uh, we'll screw that down as well. Next we're going to have to uh, solder on those connectors. Uh, so go ahead and blow the solder back through the uh, 
the little uh, little holes that are there in each one of those pads. Once I'm confident of that, I'll put the sticker back on top, and it's ready to uh, have the battery and the dis display placed back on it, and it'll be good to go.